Today, I'm going to introduce you to Origami, the design tool for interactive prototyping. Today, I'm going to show you a brief introduction into Origami Studio. Origami Studio is a design prototyping tool created by Facebook, and with it, you can do a lot of really cool interactive prototypes. So if you don't have Origami Studio already installed on your computer, and you do have a Mac, you would go to the website and download it here. They unfortunately do not have a Windows version of it yet, so this is only for Mac. On the website, you can see all the different kind of resources that they have. They have a brief overview of the program and some examples of files and documentation. They also have this great app that you can download to use a prototype on your device. And with this, they have an Android and iOS version. They also have some example files that you can check out and you can go through them to see what kind of interaction that you're looking for. Some of the example files have videos with them, so it's great to really watch the videos and get a hang of the program that way. They also have this documentation page that lists all the different kinds of patches and what they do. So this is a really great place to get started and get familiar with the program. Jumping right into it, this is what the interface of Origami looks like, and there's honestly not much here when you land on it. Typically what I do first is I go to this left-hand corner and decide what kind of device I am making this prototype for. If I'm making something for Dribbble or Portfolio, I might go with the tablet size, so that's the size I have selected right now. It's a bit larger. If I'm making a prototype to test on a device, I will pick the exact device type that I'm going with. So maybe if I'm designing for Android, I might pick a Pixel 2, or for iOS, I might go with an X or an 8. So I will choose which kind of device I want to design for. They also have watch, web, and television, so they do have a good selection of dimensions. Over here is the layers panel, and up here would be the properties panel. Since we don't have anything on the screen yet, we don't have anything listed. So to get started, you would want to click on this plus button and select what type of layer you want to add. So first, I'm just going to add a rectangle. A rectangle appears on the screen with some default properties. It lands in the corner of the screen, the zero, zero mark. So with this, I can change the X position of the rectangle, the Y position, the Z position, which is a little bit weird if you go negative. You can change the width of it, the height of it, the anchoring. So right now it's anchored in that top left, but if I shift it over to the middle, it'll be shifted over in the X direction. Now, if I wanted directly in the center of the screen, I would make X zero here. So that way it is directly centered in the middle. Now with this, I could have a negative X direction here and still be completely visible on screen. But if I shift that anchoring point, now part of it is off the screen. I can also change the color, the opacity, the radius of the rectangle. So I might wanna make it a little bit curved. The stroke, there's some properties there the shadow, and I can transform it. So there's a good number of properties I can change. For right now, I'll just leave it zero, zero in the center of the screen. Well, now how do we add interactivity to this? You want some kind of event to occur to cause this object to transform in some way. So the way that origami works is that it uses this concept of patches which basically are pieces of content that input information, transforms it, and then creates an output. Each patch receives a certain piece of information, performs a particular task, and then outputs information. So you use a series of patches in connection with one another to create interactivity in your prototype. If you double click on the screen, then your patches will become visible. If you go through the examples and prototypes online, you can get a good sense of what the patches can do and which ones you should use to help you accomplish your goal. They do have a lot of different types. 
and they do have a description on the side, but it would be best to look at the documentation first. So I want to add interactivity to the square so that when I do something, an event occurs. So then I'm going to go over this layer and click touch. So now what kind of touch, what kind of interactivity do I want to add? Tap, scroll, swipe, drag, double tap. There's different kinds of things you can add. Since I selected an iPad, it won't let me add hover. If you chose a web-based prototype, hover would be accessible. But for right now, I'm just going to click tap. So this is my first patch that appears on the screen. It's an interaction patch. As I tap, something will happen. You can see that these little boxes near it indicate when something is being triggered. So if I press down on my rectangle, down is checked, meaning that it's triggered and turned on. When I let go, tap is fired, which means that tap only fires when I have something pressed and then I release it. Versus down is something that stays down as I press. There's also force that's an option. So if I do a little quick tap, it's a very low force. Or if I really press on it hard, it will be a higher force. So that might be really cool for mobile prototypes. Right now I have this button in one state, but I want to transform it to another state when it is tapped on. So I have to add a switch patch. And a switch patch is just like a light switch. It's either on or it's off. So with this, you can have an object in one of two states, it's either in the off state or the on state. And with this, it can transition according to a certain indicator. So in this example, we have this tap interaction that we want to do with this button that will turn on the switch. So what is the switch going to do? Well, I'm going to change this object in some way. So we need to add a transition patch. You want to change some quality about that object. So there's a start and an end because you're going to start a certain value and then you want it to end at a different value. So if you double click on the type, there's a lot of different kinds of types of transitions you can have. I'm going to leave it as number because that's what I want for this prototype, but you could also change the color, index, size. There are various different kinds of transitions you can apply to your prototype. So maybe when I want to tap on this, I want to change the radius of this rectangle. So in the beginning, maybe the radius is zero, and then I want it to become more like a circle. So maybe I would increase it to about 160. So I want to leave the start at zero, and I want to end at 160. So where do I want to apply this transition? Well, I want to apply it to the radius of this object. So with this layer selected, I would hover over the properties. And you see when I hover over the properties, this plus symbol appears. That means that this property can become a variable in your prototype. So it's something that can change. So if I take that output of that transition, I want to apply it to the radius. So I would drag it over. And now that transition is being applied to the radius of that rectangle. And that's how origami works. Origami works by connecting these patches. So I have tap now connected to the turn on for the switch patch. So with origami, everything has an input and an output and you want to connect them together. And now I'm going to take that switch on and off and attach it to the transition. So when that switch is turned on, I want this transition to begin. So now when I go over my prototype, and I click on this rectangle, I'm expecting the radius of this object to change. I press it and look at that, it changed. But it didn't change smoothly, it was very sudden. There wasn't any kind of animation that occurred between the two states. So what I want to do now is add an animation in between this state, so that way when it transitions from 0 to 160, there's some kind of gradual effect that occurs. So if I double click on here, there are various different kinds of animations I can add. I'm going to add a classic animation. And in this one, we can change the duration. So it can be one, two, three seconds and the curve of the animation. So is it linear? It could be quadratic, cubic. There are a bunch of different kinds of curves I can add here. 
So for this one, I'm just going to pick one. I'll just pick quadratic in and out and leave the duration the same 0.4 seconds. So now I'm going to add it in between the switch and transition patch. So what I'm saying here is that when this switch is turned on, start this classic animation, which takes place in 0.4 seconds, and add that to the transition of that rectangle. And now when I click on it, there's an actual transition that occurs. Now, when I click on it, nothing happens. Well, why does nothing happen? It's because the switch is already turned on. So if the switch is already in the on state, I can't turn it on again. I would need to turn that switch off to turn it on again. So what I might wanna do is change this tap interaction to flip. So that way, every single time I press down on that rectangle, it flips the switch from on to off. So when I click on it again, it'll go back to the original state. And then after that, it'll turn back on. So now I'm flipping the switch per tap, on and off. So that's cool, but now maybe I wanna add other interactivity to this. So let's add a different kind of transition. So maybe I wanna make it spin. I wanna start at zero and I wanna end at 360. I wanna spin this rectangle 360 degrees. So if I look down at the side panel, I see several properties I can manipulate. There are the visual properties on top, stroke, shadow, and here's transform. So here I can transform the scale of it, how it pivots, and the rotation. So in this example, I wanna rotate it from the Z position. So I'm starting at zero and I'm ending at 360 and I wanna change the Z rotation of this object. So again, I'm going to link this up so this transition is assigned to this Z rotation. Now you could duplicate all these patches, but we already have so much of this already in place. We have an interaction patch that when something is tapped, it turns on this switch and then this animation occurs. Well, I could just take this classic animation and attach it to that transition. That way, that animation patch triggers both of these transitions to occur at the same time. So if I turn it on, it rotates and changes the radius at the same time. So by having one interaction, I can set up multiple transitions to that one object. So I hope you enjoyed this video introducing you to Origami Studios for design prototyping. Please let me know if you found this video helpful and any other kinds of videos you would like to see from me about this topic. Thanks for watching.